Welcome back, everyone. I'm Final Approach POV, and this is the follow-up to my initial breakdown of the AAIB preliminary report on Air India Flight 171. Today, we're going deeper into the timestamps, the cockpit exchange, and the questions you raised in the comments, the fuel control switches that may have triggered the entire chain of events, and yes, we'll also address the emerging investigation into the pilot's mental health, a development that's now part of the official inquiry. Let's start with the timeline. Not just the surface level events, but the seconds that changed everything. At 8.07 and 37 seconds, takeoff roll begins. At 8.08 and 33 seconds, V1 reached 153 knots. At 8.08 and 35 seconds, VR reached 155 knots. At 8.08 and 39 seconds, just four seconds later, the plane lifts off. The aircraft transitions to air mode and liftoff is confirmed. At 8.08 and 42 seconds, that's three seconds later, the aircraft reaches a max recorded airspeed of 180 knots. At 8.08 and 43 seconds, just one second later, the fuel control switches for both engines move from run to cutoff, one after the other, one second apart. That means at 8.08.43, engine one is flipped to cutoff. At 8.08 and 44 seconds, again, just one second later, engine two is flipped to cutoff. Now, between 8.08 and 44 seconds and 8.08 and 52 seconds, a conversation takes place between pilots. Why did you cut off? I did not do so. This occurs before the relight attempt, possibly during the RAT deployment, which is why I say between 8.08.44 seconds and 8.08 and 52 seconds. Because at 8.08 and 47 seconds, the rat begins supplying hydraulic power, or the rat deploys. At 8.08 and 52 seconds, the engine one switch is moved back to the run position. At 8.08 and 54 seconds, the APU inlet door opens, auto start logic is triggered. Four seconds later from engine one being put back into the run position, at 8.08 and 56 seconds, engine two switches move back to the run position. At 8.09 and 5 seconds, a mayday call is transmitted. At 8.09 and 11 seconds, the flight recorder stops. Now let's tackle some of the questions you dropped in the comments. Could the switches have moved on their own? Not under normal conditions. These are gated switches, spring-loaded and designed to prevent accidental movement. But here's where it gets interesting. In 2018, the FAA issued a Special Airworthiness Information Bulletin, SAIB number NM-18-33, warning that some Boeing fuel control switches, including the type installed on the VTANB, same aircraft as Air India 171, might have their locking feature disengaged. That means the switch could move between run and cutoff without the pilot lifting it exposing it to an accidental operation from vibration, contact, or quadrant flex. Air India did not perform the suggested inspection because the SAB was advisory, not mandatory. So yes, while rare, mechanical vulnerability is now part of the investigation. Now let's talk about what's emerging in the investigation, and it's not just technical, it's mental health. Captain Sumit Sabrawal, the pilot monitoring, had reportedly taken medical leave in recent years for depression and bereavement following his mother's death. He was considering early retirement to care for his elderly father, according to colleagues. His medical records have been submitted to the AAIB, and the inquiry is now examining whether mental health may have influenced cockpit decisions although the AAIB preliminary report does state that they brought in psychological experts to assist with the investigation. Both pilots passed their class one medical exams, but psychological evaluations are now under scrutiny. This isn't speculation. It's part of the official inquiry, and it raises serious questions about how mental health is monitored, documented, and acted upon in high stakes aviation environments. So what do we know? The switches move. The engine flames out. One relit, one didn't. The aircraft ran out of altitude before it could recover. The AAIB hasn't assigned blame, but
but the fuel control switches and pilot psychology are now the focal point of the global investigation. Before we wrap up, I want to take a moment to thank all of you, the viewers and the subscribers, and especially those of you who drop comments and ask the tough questions. You challenged assumptions, flagged inconsistencies, and brought perspectives that deserve a closer look. Whether it was about checklists, procedures, switch mechanics, or pilot mental health, this video wouldn't have been made without your input. So thank you for flying with me, for keeping the conversation sharp, and for helping push the investigation forward in ways that matter. If you've got more questions, drop them below. And as always, thank you for flying with me. Safe flying, folks.